Hey YouTubers, still messing with the Quantico heads. I want to do, do a little bit more of my product review during disassembly of the cylinder heads. Um, something I wanted to point out really quick was that they absolutely did not do a good job as, uh, with the spring, valve spring install. Um, when you install a valve spring on a cylinder head, on an aluminum cylinder head, you can't have the bottom of the spring riding directly on aluminum, okay? That spring has to, or the aluminum of the head has to be protected from this spring by a metal shim. Even if it's only 15 thousandths, it has to have a barrier or a buffer between the bottom of this spring and the aluminum of the cylinder head. Because what will happen is during operation, a valve spring oscillates and vibrates and bounces, you know, just by design, that spring will eat down into bare aluminum. So number one, first and foremost, you never ever assemble a cylinder head with the spring setting directly on the aluminum like this was. So that's that's a red flag. Um, these are fairly fat. These are like an inch and a half in diameter. They're at least inch and a half inch. Yeah, I'd say they're probably close to inch and a half diameter single springs. Supposed to be rated as a flat tappet or I think it says flat tappet or hydraulic roller, but I know it says 600 lift springs, and these do have a pretty good rate to them. You can tell when you're just dis disassembling them with the, with the tools. So now I might try to actually get these from the customer. If he's not gonna use them for anything, I would like to have them just for future projects myself. But as I was disassembling this cylinder head, I noticed that they did not protect the head with the required metal shim. So that's a big no-no, I can tell you right now. So now I've got my screw-in stud, 3-8 screw-in stud, that actually came out of a set of small block Ford Pro Comp heads. But screw-in studs are interchangeable in that way. So basically you just screw it in here get the tool Let me get a hold of it real quick this thing tries to get away from here once in a while usually what I'll do is I'll just get it started on there and then I'll do like eight turns I want more for good measure now I've had mi mixed results because I did go down and hit all these with a dead blow but so far, these are some really high quality valve locks. And most of them, this one's not gonna let go, I can tell. They won't let go, so what I do is just flip it up like this, and just tap it with the dead blow. There, set it back down. Move the handle. Let's bring in some major tension on it didn't it but <clears throat> I just wanted to show you the process of disassembling these heads with this tool because I, I had done it for years with a c-clamp style head or compressor setup and I actually made one to try to use to make it easier and it those c-clamp styles just suck I don't think I, you know, God forbid I ever, ever have to use one again because using those C-clamp style. Now, if you got one of them big, what I call machine shop style pneumatic ones, hey man, more power to you because those things rock. Let me just tell you, when you're, when you're on a budget, you can't afford to run out of course, I'm going to fumble finger everything while I'm trying to make a video. Uh, if you can't afford to just run out and buy one of them uh, pneumatic jobbers, then... Three, four, five, 
then this is by far now that thing came loose when I dropped it a while ago it popped loose what you got to do is keep an eye on that because it'll I have tried and tried and tried to get these nuts locked tight enough to hold this thing where it's supposed to be and it keeps giving me a hard time so get these things lined up and of course I haven't used this thing in a long time so it's gonna give me a headache no matter what I do but half that bad boy yeah I'm not doing that good today did a lot better for I were making the video but it's all right you see the process that's the that's the most important part Come on over there. I drop it every time every time but there's our oversized single 600 lift springs I mean, it's a lot faster when you got all, <laughs> if you got all your screw in studs, the process is a whole lot faster. Make sure I didn't lose any of those. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen. Yep. Because <clears throat> when you start popping them bottom of those valves to get that thing to release, those little keepers sometimes fly off of there. So I kind of had this piece of metal up here that was kind of catching them. But I was gonna show you guys the top of this lock. I don't know that these are name brand or anything, but anytime you look at the top of your locks and it's got that machined recess, hope you guys can see that. There's a machined recess in there. That's actually for a locator. If you were gonna run lash caps a lot of people don't know what lash caps are, but when you look at a high quality valve lock and it's got that machined recess on the top of it, they basically sell just a small cap that sits on top, right on the top, or after you assemble your valve train, you can set a, a black, it's usually a black steel cap that sits right on the top of your valve and protects your valve from damage that recessed in those locks actually holds and locates that lash cap and then when you put your rocker arm on the rocker arm will ride on the lash cap instead of on the stupid valve stem um, that is a an excellent upgrade to protect your valve stem when you're running a, a real high or high spring pressure uh, roller cam setup and also a lot of people don't realize some uh, roller rockers the front the front roller fulcrum the front roller wheel sometimes barely protrudes out of the stupid rocker arm body and what will happen is, is when you go to reinstall your rocker arms on some setups the stupid rocker arm body will hit the retainer and the stupid wheel on the front of the rocker won't even be touching the valve sometimes you can get lucky and put a valve a lash cap on the top of your valves and it'll make it work you know what i mean it'll take up that gap between the top of your valve stem and your wheel on the front of your roller rocker i've run into that problem on a pontiac before so it can happen so anyway uh initial results i haven't looked in the porch yet because i literally just finished disassembling these heads um, I was really happy with the intake runner size. I'm not real sure what to think about them assembling these heads without the required metal shim to protect the cylinder head. That seems like a really simple process and that I mean that's not going to save them a ton of money but it's absolutely going to cause them problems in quality reviews going forward as people start eating you know this valve spring starts eating down into the cylinder heads that's that's not going to fare well for their quality control. So anyway, when I reassemble these heads, they will be protected. That, that you can be assured of. So anyway, we're going to use, or actually we're going to have to use a lower spring locator cup because the valve springs that comp cam sent with the cam kit for this engine are, uh, 
look to be like a stock diameter spring. So you can't put a stock diameter spring in a 150, uh, you know, cutout and expect it to stand straight up without bounce, bouncing crooked. So you got to use, number one, we have to use a locator cup to put that stock diameter spring in the 150 cutout in the head. And because these heads come with a factor as delivered with a 1.800 installed height, the valve springs that comp sent with the cam kit, they're only a 1700. So right off the bat, we're gonna have to go with a, a 100,000 spring locator cup to make those valve springs work in this application. So anyway, once, you know, you, you basically measure and identify everything, make a game plan, get all the required parts to uh, properly set up the cylinder head so it has trouble-free operation. Um, I talked to the customer, uh, those 600 lift springs, because I was like, man, if you can run those, you should probably just run those. But when you're running a factory flat tap at cam, everybody is literally scared to death of flattening a lobe or messing up a lifter on camshaft break-in. Those 600 list springs are listed as 130 pound on the seat, whereas those other comp springs, I think, were only like 105 pounds, which is, you know, that's, <laughs> that's less seat pressure than just an old Z28 spring at 110. So, I don't know. I guess comp knows what they're doing because it's just a little XC 268 hydraulic cam going into this 400 small block uh, for like more like a d driver street, like 79 to 82 Corvette. So anyway, hopefully they know what they're doing. I don't like running really weak springs like that because it always seems like it holds back your RPM, doesn't let it rev to its full potential. But <clears throat> that's what comp says that cam is supposed to have. So they know more about it than I do and we're going to run it. So anyway, uh, Quantico 195cc cylinder head review. So far, so good. Uh, if you buy a set, <clears throat> don't run them out of the box. At least put those metal uh, spacer shims below your sh uh, valve springs so the springs don't eat into your cylinder head. So, anyway, there's an update. There's my partial review. Thanks again for you guys watching. Like and subscribe.